By the end of this video, you will know how to write a unit test for when you expect a method to throw an exception. So just like returning a value or modifying an object, throwing exceptions are included in the possible outcomes we can expect, and we therefore must test for from our application behavior. I will demonstrate how we can test for exceptions by testing this class called cashier. There is a single public method called validate transaction that accepts a string for the currency and an amount as a double. Both parameters are first checked to ensure that the currency is within this list of accepted currencies. So we'll be using this Boolean method down here called currency is accepted. And if the currency is within this list of strings, it will return true. Otherwise, an illegal argument exception will be thrown. And then second, it will just check that the amount is valid. And that just checks that the amount is greater than zero. If it isn't greater than zero, an invalid transaction amount exception will be thrown. And this exception itself has been created uh, within the application. So it just extends the runtime exception parent class. So I've created the cashier test class within the test Java directory. And the first thing I'd like to do is test that the currency is accepted Boolean. We'll be throwing this illegal argument exception. So the currency of US dollar is not contained within this list of strings, which only contains Euro and GBP. So if I run this test, I would expect it to fail and to throw the illegal argument exception, telling me that the currency we've passed in is not accepted. That's what we have below. We can make this test pass by changing the annotation of test to expect the exception to be thrown. So we open the brackets and we put expected and then we put in the illegal argument exception dot class. We can now see that the test is passing. And this is a very straightforward way of how we can test for exceptions within our application. For demonstration, I'm just going to create the second test, which will be checking that the amount is valid. Otherwise it will throw this invalid transaction amount. see that the currency is euro so that should be accepted but then the negative amount should throw the invalid transaction exception so this test should fail invalid transaction amount transaction amount must be greater than zero and now I can run the test and we expect it to now pass that's as straightforward as it is for testing for exceptions with JUnit. One last point I'd like to make is that the expected exception can also be encapsulated by the parent class. So for invalid transaction amount, we know that it extends runtime exception. So if you don't want to be as specific, you can just put runtime exception and it will still pass. And the same goes for the legal argument exception, which also extends the runtime exception. So that summarizes this video on how we can test for expected exceptions being thrown from our application with JUnit.